polynomial technique for deriving finite difference approximations. I'll first describe the polynomial technique and then give several examples. I think this is one of those things that's kind of weird and complicated and confusing enough that it will take some practice. So I recommend repeating these examples on your own on paper to fully understand what's going on here. Here we go. The polynomial technique for deriving finite difference approximations. Let's say we have an nth order polynomial meaning we have an x to the n as the highest order exponent. How many points do we need to calculate all of the coefficients in this polynomial? How many coefficients do we have? Well, we have the a sub naught, a sub one, a sub two, all the way up to a sub n. But because we're starting at zero here, we have n plus one coefficients. So we have n plus one things to calculate. That means we need at least n plus one points in order to determine n plus one coefficients for that polynomial. So assuming we have fit that to some discrete data, we can write our function as that polynomial, of course, but now we can calculate analytical derivative and second order and third order and so on. So the first order derivative, if we know our polynomial coefficients, we can just take the derivative of this original polynomial and we end up here. Now we have a way using these polynomial coefficients to calculate these, the first order derivative. Well, we take the derivative again. Now we can use those same polynomial coefficients to calculate a second order derivative. We can take a derivative again, use those same polynomial coefficients to calculate a third order derivative and so on. So if we have a bunch of discrete points, we fit those to a polynomial and we use that polynomial to estimate our derivatives or even interpolate the function. So now I ask the question, what's the easiest value of x for evaluating f of x or any of its derivatives? And so if we look at these, what value of x would make this the easiest? What about x equals zero? And if we do that, everything with an x or x squared or x cubed or anything just drops. And we're really just left with these first terms here. So if somehow there's a magical way where we only have to evaluate that first term in all of these polynomial equations, that would make deriving finite difference approximations very, very easy. Let's think about how to do that. So how do we make, how do we always do this with an easy point? Remember the property where the finite difference coefficients do not change if we just slide all of our points around in space. It's only when we start changing the relative positions that the finite difference coefficients change. So why don't we just figure out where amongst our points we wanna calculate that finite difference and slide that point to x equals zero. So that's exactly what we do. If we want to evaluate our finite difference at some value x sub fd, we'll just take all our values of x, subtract this x fd. Now we'll put a little squiggly over the, the x, a tilde. This is our translated coordinates. Now in our translated coordinate system, x equals zero where we're evaluating our derivative. And we can translate the coordinates just fine. We can have, we can do this and translate this anywhere. And the finite difference coefficients that we calculate in the end do not change. It's only when we would change the relative positions of our points that we're calculating these from that things would change. So that's the trick. We just shift so that we center our points around zero or place our points around zero so that zero is where we want to evaluate the derivative. So given that we've done that, if we want to interpolate the function at x f d or in our translated coordinate system zero, it's just polynomial coefficient a naught. If we want the first order derivative, that's just polynomial coefficient a one. Second order derivative, just polynomial coefficient a two times two. Third order derivative, polynomial coefficient a three times six, and this could go on. So all of this suggests a four-step procedure for deriving finite difference approximations. Step one is identify the points from which we want to estimate or, or interpolate the function or any of its derivatives. 
That's step one. Step two, we're going to shift those points so that in our shifted coordinate system, it equals zero where we want to evaluate our derivative. So another way to think about this, suppose we want to estimate our derivative at a position x sub fd, we simply subtract this from all our values of x, and that's our values of x in the shifted coordinate system. We will then fit our shifted points to a polynomial, and we calculate our polynomial coefficients. Then if we want to interpolate our function at x f d or in the shifted coordinate system zero, that's just polynomial coefficient a naught. The first order derivative is polynomial coefficient a one. Second order is polynomial coefficient a two times two. And it's rare that you'll go higher than this, so I'm only writing these three here. All right, let's go through this in a little bit more detail step by step. So step one, we're choosing our coordinates. So what I'll do is store those coordinates in a column vector. Next, we're going to shift that so that in the shifted coordinate system, the shifted x equals zero where we're evaluating our derivative. So if we want to evaluate things at a position xfd, we simply subtract xfd from every value of x. So our new column vector for the shifted values, it's our old column vector that has the actual values of x and we subtract xfd from each one of those that we're showing here. Now we have a new column vector in our shifted coordinate system and in the shifted coordinate system, x tilde equals zero where we're evaluating our derivative. Ultimately, this is what we need to come up with. Now we need to fit these points to a polynomial. So we need to build a big X matrix, as you recall from curve fitting. And so our X matrix, the first column is our column vector in the shifted coordinate system to the zero power. Second column is those shifted coordinates to the first power, then second power, third power, all the way up to nth power. And as a final note, this zero power can fail if any of these values of X are zero. So really just place ones down this entire column. Then you have your shifted coordinates shifted coordinate squared, shifted coordinates cubed, and so on. And just to put this matrix in terms of the original X values, it's something like that, but I think it's easy just to shift and work with a column vector of shifted coordinates, and we're building a matrix that looks like this. At this point, we need to invert the matrix X that we just constructed. So let's call that matrix Y. So this really has nothing to do with Y positions. I guess I'm just running out of letters to call things. So this is the inverse of matrix X. Now we have this inverted matrix X, our Y matrix, pre-multiplying our column vector of function values. And right now we don't know these, so we're gonna leave these symbolic because we're deriving a finite difference approximation. So think of these as just symbolic F1, F2, F3, and so on. We pre-multiply by our Y matrix, we get a column vector. That column vector are our polynomial coefficients in terms of the Fs. So when we do that, here's what we get. Remember, these are the elements of that inverse matrix. So our A0 is just some linear sum of function values. Our A1 is a linear sum of function values and so on. They're all like that in the same form. Now that we have the polynomial coefficients, we're ready to write the finite difference approximation. So if we want to interpolate our function at x tilde equals zero, that's just this first polynomial coefficient. So literally just this expression will interpolate our function at zero. This polynomial coefficient a1, that's our first order derivative. So this line here, that is the finite difference approximation for a first order derivative. Now, if we want a second order derivative, it's polynomial coefficient two, but we have to remember to multiply by two. That's an easy thing to forget. So if we look at this expression, that's not quite the finite difference expression for a second order derivative. Close, but not there. We have to multiply it by two and so on. And, but it's very rare that you'll need to go higher than the second order derivative. So looking at this, we invert this X matrix to get the Y matrix and the rows of y are essentially our finite difference coefficients. 
we have an exception when we get to the second order derivative and higher, we have to remember to multiply by something. And so for a second order derivative, we're multiplying by twos. For the third order derivative, I believe we're multiplying by sixes, and I don't know what's higher than that. But essentially, the rows in this Y matrix, or the inverse of the X matrix, are our finite difference coefficients. Examples using the polynomial technique. Hopefully this will drive everything home if you're still a little bit confused. So let's derive first and second order finite difference approximations that span across three evenly spaced points. And we want to evaluate our derivatives at the midpoint, so at the second point. So the first thing we need to do is construct this column vector in our shifted coordinate system. So we don't actually need the real coordinates of the points. We're in a shifted system. And we want to evaluate our finite difference at the second point. So we know that's going to be a zero in our shifted system. Now, rather than keep writing delta x, which is what I tend to do more often, it's also a common notation to use h for the spacing. So h and delta x are really the same thing. So assuming we have evenly spaced points, that would make the first point at position minus h and the third point at positive h. So this is our column vector of shifted coordinates. Now we need to build this matrix X. And remember the first column is this column vector of X's to the zero power, or really just ones is what we'll do. Then we have the column vector to the first power, and then the third one to the second power. So this first column's all ones. In the second column is simply just this column vector of shifted coordinates, and then we'll square them. So we end up with an H squared in the top and an H squared in the bottom and a zero still in the middle. That is our X matrix. Next step is to invert that. And skipping all that work, here's the answer in the end. That is our inverted X matrix. And remember, the rows of this matrix are essentially our finite difference coefficients. Only, only exception, really, for a second order derivative, we'll have to multiply by two. So now we get our polynomial coefficients. So we will pre-multiply our symbolic function values by this Y matrix. That gives us a column vector, and those are our polynomial coefficients. So if we do the math and do this multiplication, here's where we end up. Our a naught is 0 times f1 plus 1 times f2 plus 0 times f3. That's really just f2. Now think about what the a naught is. That is estimating or interpolating the function at the midpoint. Well, the midpoint's known as f2, so it makes sense. That would just be f2. Our a1 coefficient is minus 1 over 2h times f1, 0 times f2, positive 1 over 2h times f3. And if we simplify this, it's really f3 minus f1 over 2h. And I won't do the, but it's, you know, the, the first element times f1, second element times f2, third times f3. And when we simplify, here's where we end up. And if you remember back to when we first started talking about finite difference approximations, that's very close to the finite difference approximation for a second order derivative, other than the two sitting here, but we know we'll have to multiply that by two anyway, which is the last step. So if we're interpolating our function at XFD, that's just the first polynomial coefficient, F2. That makes sense. We don't even have to interpolate because we know the function at that point. The first order derivative at the midpoint F3 minus F1 over 2H. That's rise over run. We had previously derived that finite difference approximation. Second order derivative at the midpoint, XFD, is 2 times A2. So we'll go grab this expression, multiply it by 2. That really just eliminates the 2 in the denominator. And that is exactly what we derived in our first discussion of finite differences. Let's derive the same thing again, the first and second order finite differences across the same points. However, let's evaluate the derivatives at the first point. So the only difference in this procedure is this list of shifted coordinates. We're evaluating at the first point. So of course that will be zero in our shifted coordinates. That makes the first point at H and the third point at two H. The rest of our procedure stays the same. We build this X matrix. So we have our column vector of ones. We have our shifted coordinates and then our shifted coordinates squared. 
We then invert that matrix, skipping all the algebra. Here's our inverted matrix, and the rows are almost our finite difference coefficients. We can get our polynomial coefficients by pre-multiplying that matrix we inverted by a column vector of our symbolic function values, f1, f2, f3. And this is where we end up. Okay, now if we are interpolating f at the first point, that's our first polynomial coefficient. That's just f1. That makes sense because we know the function at the first point. That's just f1. Now these other ones are a little bit less intuitive maybe. So we're evaluating the first order derivative at the first point. That's just polynomial coefficient a1. And that's what we calculate up here. We just copy it down. And I'm looking at these finite difference coefficients and I wouldn't be able to look at those and know, oh, okay, we're evaluating the finite difference at the first point. So in addition to this equation, we'll have to somehow write off to the side and remember where that's evaluating our finite difference. Now, if we go to the second order derivative, two times a2, we end up with the same thing we had on the previous slide, but the previous slide was evaluating the derivative at the midpoint, but we have the same equation evaluating the second order derivative at the first point. Why is that? Shouldn't that have changed? And well, maybe yes, but here's why it didn't is because we didn't have enough extra information to evaluate at the first point. It requires all three points. And so the equation has to stay the same. Whereas evaluating a first order derivative only requires two points, but since we actually have three, we have a little bit extra information. Now the numbers do change a little bit. So it makes sense that that would change as we just ran out of information. So that's the best this method could come up with. And just for fun, let's evaluate derivatives just like we did, but at the midpoint of four discrete points. Same procedure now. We have a column vector in our shifted coordinate systems. Now, if we're at the midpoint of four points, the midpoint's right between these two. So we don't actually see a zero in here. That would make our, we have at zero here, we'd have minus h over two for the second point, minus three has h for the first point, half of h for the third point, and three has h for the second point. Otherwise, the procedure's not changing. We build our x matrix. So our first column's ones. Our second column is our shifted coordinates. Third column, shifted coordinates squared. Fourth column, shifted coordinates cubed. Now we symbolically invert that, and that took some algebra, but this is that matrix inverted. And we're remembering the rows of this are essentially our finite difference coefficients. So we will calculate first our polynomial coefficients by pre-multiplying this column vector of symbolic function values, F1 to F4. That gives us our polynomial coefficients. Once we have those, now we can evaluate the function and its derivatives. This first one is interpolating the function at that midpoint. That's just our first polynomial coefficient. And we end up here. That's simply just read off from this. Our first order derivative at the midpoint ends up here. This is actually used a lot in second order accurate finite difference methods. So this is something that in my head I recognize. And a second order derivative at the midpoint is two times the poly polynomial coefficient a2. Multiplying by two is an easy one to forget. I forget that all the time, but when we do, this is where we end up for evaluating the second order derivative. So remember the procedure, the column vector of our shifted coordinates. Then we build the big X matrix, first column of all ones, second column is our shifted coordinates, then the next column is squared, next is cubed, and so on. We invert that. And really the rows of that are our finite difference coefficients, but we can fill in the details by calculating the polynomial coefficients and then writing our approximations. This takes practice. This is weird and confusing. So I recommend doing a lot of this, working through the homework. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.